Welcome to the Financial Times here in New York. What's not to like if you're an investor after today's Federal Reserve policy meeting and press conference given by Janet Yellen, the chairwoman of the central bank? We've seen the S&P 500 close at a new record high. We've seen bond yields fall. And we've also seen volatility drop to a new low. The CBOE's VIX index, which measures equity volatility, is now at its lowest level since February of 2007. Joining me here to discuss the consequences of today's policy meeting in what is a, a very much an Alphaville relaxed setting, Cardiff Garcia. This is dressed up for Alphaville, all right, Mike? <laughs> I've come down, I'm slumming <laughs> down. <laughs> um, well, look, I mean, uh, part of what happened today was completely expected, right? We got another $10 billion taper. Uh, growth for this year, for 2014, uh, was downgraded, but it was also communicated quite clearly that the Fed thinks that that was just because of what happened in the first quarter, that that was a weather-related blip, and the growth is now, in fact, rebounding. Overall, though, it was, I think, quite clearly uh, a fairly dovish message, right? Uh, interestingly, the outlook for inflation didn't really much change, despite what's happened in recent months in both the PCE, the Fed's preferred measure, and in the CPI. They've come back uh, you know, up towards target. It seems like Janet Yellen doesn't think that that's uh, anything to worry about anytime soon. Um, interestingly enough, the long-term projected uh, federal funds target rate was also lowered just a little bit. I think that suggests that maybe Janet Yellen and some others on the FOMC are now starting to buy into some of the you know, broader and more prevalent stagnationist theories that are out there about the possibility that the potential growth rate uh, for the U.S. economy might be lower than it has been historically, which means that, that you know, target rates are going to be a little bit lower even after we get back to mandate consistent levels of uh, inflation and unemployment. Which, of course, is what the bond market's been saying all year, given yep. the surprise drop in long-term yields. Many investors have been caught up by that trade. Sure. Um, let's sort of turn to financial stability, because Janet Yellen did talk about this, but then also said it has no bearing on monetary policy. And having spoken to a few investors this afternoon, they seem to say, well, this is a green light for both equity and bond prices this year. So this has been something that's been debated quite a lot this year. Um, what I heard from Janet Yellen today is that it's not that financial stability doesn't matter at all, but that it's a secondary variable, and that for her to incorporate financial stability into monetary policy, as opposed to you know, the Fed's sort of regulatory supervisory responsibilities, uh, it would have to meet a very high standard for potential instability, a much higher standard than some of the others on the FOMC, formerly uh, Jeremy Stein, for instance, certainly yes. the Hawks, Tarillo. Mm -hmm. For her, financial stability is an issue only if it's really qu quite clear that it's going to create a problem for monetary policy later on down the line. She doesn't think we're anywhere near that point. And so in the meantime, it's sort of, you know, full steam ahead. She's going to keep chasing the Fed's mandated targets of uh, inflation and unemployment. And really, I mean, right now they're still missing on both of those targets and right. in the same direction. She says that they both call for continued accommodative monetary policy. The really interesting question is what happens later on? if she's missing on one versus the other. She also addressed this in the press conference. Mm -hmm. She said that, you know what, um, when she was asked about the possibility that she would allow inflation to overshoot the target temporarily, she essentially said yes, that if they're still missing on their employment mandate, on their mandate for full employment, that possibly, yeah, that that would be you know, something that she would consider. I thought that was really very interesting. But yeah, you're right. Financial stability, I don't think, is yet something that's impacting her decision. That's having an, an influence on, on her decision. Yeah, which is quite strange. Or I suppose it's quite interesting because we've, there was a CLO conference today in New York, which our colleague Tracy Alloway attended. And she said one of the key takeaways was a growing concern that investors are leveraging up their exposure to AAA tranches of CLOs. So if something does start to go wrong in the economy, that could potentially be a tripping point for an, a, a dramatic increase in volatility like we saw pre-2007. Sure, and it's a really tough choice. I think the, you know, the justification for it is that even appropriately calibrated monetary policy doesn't necessarily have to be costless. This is sort of an unfortunate side effect. And so it, the question is, how do you weigh the trade-off mm -hmm. between missing on the real economy mandate and also setting the stage for potential instability later? It's a tough, it's a tough issue. Now, sort of just staying on that theme of low volatility, obviously it looks like the ground is set for a very nice summer for both equity and bond prices, although let's keep an eye on the price of oil, sure. given what's going on in the Middle East. But what I thought was quite interesting too, and again, it's, it's sort of what people in the market were saying to me this afternoon was, well, if you look at where the bond market's pricing 2015 and 2016 December Fed funds and where the Fed's sort of saying its estimates are, there is a divergence there. And it suggests either the Fed is too aggressive or the bond market is being way too optimistic. 
Yeah, it's a tough question, too, because, you know, Janet Yellen herself in the last press conference said that you can essentially, if not ignore the dots, ignore yeah. those projections, that those shouldn't be the primary place that you look, that you should look to the statement itself, which has said, again, that uh, the level of interest rates might not go back to historically what you would expect, even after we get back to full employment and stable prices. So in a sense, she kind of, she kind of you know, telegraphed that that's what you should think. Well, mm -hmm. it looks like the markets bought into it. <laughs> as, yes. uh, so it is, is one possible explanation. But really, I mean, in terms of volatility and volumes and what's happening in yields right now, I mean, there's so many different you know, possible variables involved that it's really hard to say exactly where monetary policy comes into play. Great, Cardiff. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure.